So if one third of a whole equals 33%, how come three one thirds equal a whole? Mathematics, how do they work? All right, first order of business is we now need to make a ground plane. So in order to do that, you can either do it of two different ways, which is going up here to your tools panel, selecting your polygons on selecting your ground plane, or alternatively, you can go over here to your file, edit, modify keys, go under create, polygon primitives, and select plane. Of course, drag on the grid. You can hold down shift to make it parallel, both length and width wise. And you're gonna make it uh, just as big as you seem necessary. So if you look over here into my render view, uh, okay, that's about good right there. You don't really need that much, all right? So now we have a ground plane going on. Next thing we need to do now is we need to make our model. So for this time, our model is gonna be some text. Simple, effective, and easy to create. All right, so now to create our text, we need to go up here to our create panel, select text, but select the white box that's next to it. That basically gives us options for the tools. Okay, select in your text, I put in digital drop, make your font, uh, make sure to select bevel instead of poly trim and curves because bevel looks somewhat the best for this type of project, you know, looks a bit more stylish. Set your width and depth how the way you want it. All of this stuff is any way how you want it, all right? And now select create. All right, then now you got your text set up. Now we just need to resize it, so press R. Or alternatively, you can press the uh, scale tool here. And we're gonna size it down based on what we look like in the render view, so press E or the rotation tool. Let's turn this thing around. Uh, I want it somewhat of an angle. So let's see here. Okay. A little bit bigger, I think. All right, that seems pretty, okay, I like it right there. That looks pretty good. The next thing you wanna do now is to make sure your letters aren't actually hitting below the plane. So if you can see here, just barely, the letters are just barely below the actual plane, which in real life is impossible. So let's uh, move it up a bit. So all of them are now nice and uh, just barely hovering above the uh, plane. Okay, yeah, we can see that's pretty good. In fact, that's probably the closest we can get. Okay, and like we've done earlier, we have now have our render settings all ready to go. Uh, mental ray is all set. Now let's make some uh, renders just to see how this thing would look like starting off. So we need to select our viewport over here. That's very important for these renders, of course. And now you need to select the little, I forget what tool this is called, but it has to do something with rendering and the movies. So anyways, click it. All right, then now we got our first render. Uh, for this project, we're gonna save all of our image files. In fact, that's what I do every time I do any sort of 3D project. And to do that, we need to create this keep image. So just click that button and boom, there you go. Now it creates an instance of the current frame and one in the past. So if you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, what the heck is going on? You know, everything's all black. Well, like I've done earlier, we deleted our default light. So we didn't really need that at all. And if we turn back on default light and render it, we're going to see a little bit something different, see? But you want to make sure you have enabled default light turned off because we're going to create our own lights. First thing we need to do is create some lights. So let's just create a spotlight. Or better yet, actually, let's create an area light. So go over here to spotlight attributes. And of course, you guys already know how to do this. And let's make an area light. Move it up. Let's see. Move this guy around. Manipulator tool. Up, 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 up. Uh, okay. The lighting for the scene is somewhat um, everywhere. So this is going to be a bit more difficult to create, but we'll go through it pretty easy. All right, now let's check out what this would look like. All right, now we'll save it. But at least there's somewhat of an improvement. One thing you want to notice right now, though, there, there's no shadows. So let's enable shadows for this light. Select it. Uh, go down to shadows right here. You want to use ray trace shadows. Let's just keep it at one and one right now for the shadow rays and the ray depth limit. Now let's render again. Okay, so far so good. We got some shadows at least going on. Uh, if you're wondering right now, what is all that little graininess? That is because the shadow is only using one ray. So let's bump that up too. So let's see. Let's use about, I don't know. Let's set it at 30 just to start off. Now let's go for another render. Much better, much, much softer. 
Uh, you can alternatively have like a hundred rays in your render. It won't really speed up the process a whole lot unless you have a huge amount of things going on. But since we'll be using a bunch of lights in the scene because the light isn't really in one place, it will. Keep it at a low somewhere in between 30 and 60. All right, let's keep that image. See that? Little by little, we got improvement. Okay, so now we more or less have some form of lighting. Now what we have to do is we have to make our ground plane here use the background. And that's very easy. We just select the ground plane here in our perspective view or in our render view. Right click it while holding the right mouse button down and assign new material. You can also use a hypergraph, of course, if you'd like. Whatever you call it, go down over here to Maya under favorites. And now what you're going to do is you're going to select use background. Okay. So now let's just render this. See what that looks like. Okay, we got some reflectiveness, but wow, already that looks pretty good. So let's save that image, and we need to bump down the reflectiveness, since this automatically comes with reflectivity. Okay, go over here to use background 1. Oh, why the heck am I telling you guys this? You already know how to use Maya, or else you wouldn't even be watching this. Bump down the reflectivity to absolute zero, reflection limit, put that to zero as well. You don't really need it. Now let's render it one more time. Very nice. I really like that. That looks great. Now let's tweak around some of the materials. What we're going to use this time is going to be the average run of the mill MIA mental ray. So that's material X. Now to get that, you're going to have to right click your selected object, hold down the right mouse button and select assign new material. Then under mental ray, you're going to go materials, Maya material X, even though it doesn't say Maya, it just says MIA. I like saying Maya. Makes more sense. Go ahead and select it now. Now you're going to go over to presets to the right here. Select Glossy Plastic, and now you're going to select Replace. All right, then. Now let's just do a quick little render to see what it looks like. All right, then. So far, that's what it looks like in a nutshell. So now let's finally get things going along smoothly. All right, so basically now you have everything already in set up. The only thing you need to do now is just find a balance between your materials and your lighting and your ground plane and things like that. From here on now, this is a very sort of personal way you could see to your scene because now you have everything all set up. So I'm going to speed up this footage just so you can get an idea how my specific scene would go along with uh, this lighting, how it's a little bit advanced considering there's no significant source. My materials, I want to make it somewhat at least shiny but a little bit realistic if I can as well. So sit back and uh, watch. And remember, a lot of the techniques I'm going to use right now can definitely and probably will be applied to your scene. So make sure you pay attention more or less for the process of how I do things along in this particular 3D scene. I hate it when people whore off their channel by screaming, hey, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe every freaking five seconds. It's annoying. If your channel is good, I'll subscribe.